If you want cheap Microsoft points and game codes, check out g2a.com. Link is in the description below. Hey guys, it's Melvin7 here, and today I'm bringing you my BPL predictions. I believe it's match day 17. Now, in the last episode, the Mr. AC did very well, to be honest. I think he got 8 points, whereas I got 5. Um, the United results saved me. So now, uh, it's 29 to him and 28 to me. So it's very, very close. He's beaten me by 1 point the first time. He's took the lead in this series, but don't worry. I'll pull it back and I'll go ahead again. So... In the first game, we've got Man City taking on Crystal Palace. Now, obviously, Man City are stricken with injuries. They've got company out. They've got Aguero out. They've got, I don't know if Yaya Turi suspended, etc. So they've got some key players out. They've also got Zieko and Jovetic out. So they, they may have to resort to Pozzo up front, or Pozzo, whatever the hell he's called. Whereas Crystal Palace, on the other hand, they drew 1-1 with Stoke. So a decent result for those. I mean, Stoke isn't an easy team to go to. They're very unpredictable in the Premier League. So for me, Manchester City are at home. And they're lacking some of the goal threat, obviously, through Aguero. And obviously, 1-0 against Leicester isn't the greatest. But I think because they're at home, you know, they've got enough talent to see off Crystal Palace. Again, I'm going to say... I'm going to say a 2-0 win for City. I think it's going to be fairly comfortable. Hopefully they drop points, but we'll see what happens. The next game is my team. Well, Aston Villa aren't my team, but Man United are. It's going to be an interesting game. It's at Villa Park. Aston Villa are stricken with injuries at the minute. Perfect time to play them. Obviously, they can't play cleverly. He's on loan. Uh, Richardson got himself sent off. Hutton, who's been a key player for them, is also out injured, I believe. So... They've got deadly players though, like Benteke, etc. I think Akore is doing well. I think he's back in defence. They've obviously got Guzan. I don't know if Flaw's back. I don't think so. Whereas us, obviously, six straight wings. Um, that's like our best run of form since Ferguson left. Uh, the performances haven't been the greatest, but you know, we're improving. We're getting gradually better. Some players are coming back. Di Maria's fit. Whether he starts, we'll never know. Falcao's obviously came out in the press and said that he's fully fit now. He wants to stay at Manchester United, but he wants to play more. So, I really want to see him... Uh, in the starting lineup, it would be absolutely fantastic. Hopefully, Herrera starts. Obviously, beating Liverpool 3 0 is a fantastic result. So, I'm going to predict another 3 0. Okay, Aston Villa haven't exactly been great, but they haven't been bad. But I just think because the confidence is flowing, we've got some key players returning, and Villa have so many injuries, I think. We'll, do, we'll get a good result against these and hopefully Falcao bags himself at least a brace. That'll be, well, at least a goal. It'd be great to see a brace, though, and possibly a hat-trick. But, you know, I'll not get my hopes up too much. Anyway, the next game, we've got Hull City taking on Swansea. Now, Hull were pretty good against Chelsea. I'm not going to lie. 2-0 uh, to Chelsea. Obviously, they lost. Um, they just defended poorly in the first 10 minutes, allowing Hazard to get a header. And then... You know, they gradually grew into the game, but the red card decision killed them off. And obviously, Cahill had a debatable dive, so possibly the game could have been a little different. But, you know, Chelsea were good value for their win, but they just didn't show too much more. So Hull should feel fairly confident going into this. I mean, Swansea have been very, very unlucky. They lost against Spurs 2-1. Um, I watched that game. They didn't deserve to lose, same as the last time. Um, I forgot who they played when they lost narrowly again. I think it was West Ham. They just gave up at the end of that game I suppose but the Spurs won they deserve to get something from it so they're going to be really wanting to get something out of this game and they've got the quality to do so Boney, Sigurdsson etc whereas Hull you know they, they, their confidence is I suppose a bit iffy they do need to get some points on the board though so for me I'm going to predict a Swansea win though I wouldn't be surprised to see this draw I'm going to say 2-1 to Swansea the next game we've got QPR taking on uh, West Brom so Everton obviously beat QPR 3-1. I predicted it to be a draw, but Everton were just top quality on the day. Barkley scored a great, great goal. And, you know, they were good value for their win. So, you know, QPR, I'm, I think they've got an injury. Or Austin, I think, returned because he was um, he was banned for that game, obviously. So, you know, they're at home, so they've got a little bit more firepower. Uh, obviously, West Brom have just beat Aston Villa as well. So... Their confidence is going to be up a bit. Um, Berahino, I'm not sure if he's scored in a while though, so maybe he can break his goal duck in this game. But QPR uh, is away form and home form has been completely different. At home, they're a lot more deadly away. I think they're the only team not to register a single point away. So, since they're at home, I've got to give it to QPR this game. I think they're going to win 2-0. Uh, I'm going to say 2-0. Even though West Brom have just won, you know, I think because of that, they're maybe going to last. They're going to... Uh, I don't know, I just believe QPR have a, enough to see off West Brom. The next game is Southampton against Everton. Now, Southampton, jeez, man. 
five losses in all competitions. Obviously, the fans don't want to hear that, but it's true. They lost against Sheffield United, and obviously, they were beaten 1-0 to Burnley, which I was really, really surprised at, since Burnley haven't shown a lot this season. Everton, however, on high, they just beat QPR. They're playing really, really well. They're through in the Europa League, so, you know, confidence is booming. So, for me, if this had been played three weeks ago, I would have said a Southampton win. However, it is not, and Southampton are on a, a bad slump, but... Players like Schneidlin are back, so it's going to prove a little bit difficult for Everton, but they've got the quality to see them off. They've got Barkley on form. They've got, obviously, Lukaku. They've got Everton. They've got Eto'o. They've got Naismith. They've got so much quality. Baines, Coleman. So, for me, I think it's going to be another defeat for Southampton. I'm going to say 3-1 to Everton. The next game, we've got Spurs taking on Burnley. Spurs, obviously, beat Swansea 2-1, whereas Burnley beat Southampton 1-0. Both sides... You know, getting some much needed points to be honest. Um, Spurs obviously 4-0 against Newcastle. Uh, that was mainly down to John Anik. Uh, three of the goals were his fault. In the Capital One Cup, they're going to be on an extreme high. They're in the semi-finals of that. They're through in the Europa. Burnley on the other hand, Danny Ng seems absolutely incredible and they need to hold on to him in January. But for me, only one result in this. If again, earlier in the season I might have said a nil-nil, but for me, Spurs just have too much quality with Harry Kane and Eriksen showing great class. And even Soldado scored against Newcastle. Who the hell would have thought that? So yeah, I'm going to say 2-0 to Spurs. The next game we've got West Ham up against Leicester. Now West Ham just came off a 1-1 draw against Sunderland at the Stadium of Light. It's not a bad result to be honest. It's an okay result. And City, uh, Leicester City lost against the other city, which is Manchester City 1-0. Not too bad of a result considering how well Man City have done. I know they were without Aguero, etc. But Leicester really, really need to pick up the points though. They are bottom of the league and haven't had a win since they beat us. So for me, again, West Ham are just high-flying. They're doing very, very well. They've got so much talent. It is unbelievable. So, for me, it I think it's going to be a whitewash. It might not be Leicester seem a little bit more defensively shaped up, but West Ham, especially at home, are extremely deadly. So, for me, 3-0 whitewash in this one. The next game is the biggest game of this week. It is the Northeast Derby. It is Newcastle taking on Sunderland. Now, again, if this fixture had been played three weeks ago, I would have said Newcastle are going to win. But... Out of current form, Sunderland have just drew against West Ham. And West Ham are high flying, so that's a big result. Newcastle being dumped out of the uh, Captain One Cup. They lost 4-1 to Arsenal. You know, it's not a great week for though for them. So this is going to be a very very difficult one. It could go either way. It depends which team is fired up more. Sunderland are usually better in the derbies of recent form anyway, so they're going to be fired up even though it's at St James's Park. It's a really difficult game to call, but for me. I think Sunderland are going to edge this if they can find a way through because, you know, they've been great defensively, but at the back, uh, sorry, at the front, they haven't been as good. But for me, I think this is going to be a really high scorer. You know, I'm going to say 3-2 Sunderland. The Derbies usually are in the northeast, So, you know, 3-2 Sunderland for me. But again, this is just unpredictable. The hardest result to predict this week for me. The next uh, game is another big game. It's Liverpool up against Arsenal. Now, Liverpool, mixed bag of results. Drawing 1-1 with Basel, losing 3-0 to us, but then beating Bournemouth, who are top of the championship, 3-1 in the Capital One Cup. Obviously, they're in the semis. And um, Brendan Rodgers, you know, his quote was taken out of context, but uh, he compared Sterling in the role he's playing with Alexis Sanchez um, because he was playing a centre-forward role, etc. And he thinks he's got many of the qualities that Sanchez does. In my eyes, obviously, Sanchez is 10 times the player, but I don't think that's what Brendan Rodgers meant. But still, this is going to be a, a good game to watch because Arsenal obviously just beat Newcastle 4-1, but it doesn't mean everything. Uh, obviously, they're still a bit iffy at the back, so both sides, to be honest, are going to be looking for a win, and this is going to be a cracker, in my opinion. And for me... I personally want it to be a draw because Liverpool are so far back anyway and Arsenal are closer to us. So for me, a draw is a perfect result. But I'm swaying with Arsenal. You know what? I'm going to say 3-1 Arsenal. You know, if they're clinical on the day, they're going to beat Liverpool, especially in the form Liverpool are in, regardless of the fact they just beat Bournemouth 3-1. And the last game is Stoke at the Britannia against Chelsea. Now, this game... Stoke are so unpredictable. They they can defend like 
20 at the back. I know there's only 10 players, obviously, but they play they play some of the most defensive football, especially at home. And then they've got Bojan, who's in form, obviously. And they drew 1-1 with Crystal Palace away, which isn't a bad result. It isn't great. Chelsea beat Hull 2-0. I think all their players are eligible now. Uh, I think they're all back. I'm not sure if Courtois is back from injury. Matic, I think, is available. I think Fabregas is not uh, banned either. Neither is Diego Costa. So they're going to have a full force team. But I don't think it's going to be a big uh, scoring game at all, like a high scoring game. But you've got to back Chelsea. You really do. I mean, they, they've just been unstoppable, especially when their full team is playing. And that's basically what I think will be chosen. I think uh, all their main players like Matic, Costa, Fabregas, Courtois will be playing. Even if Courtois doesn't, they've got Czech. So I'm going to say it's going to be another 2-0. Uh, Stoke will defend though, so it's going to be very hard for Chelsea to break through, in my opinion. And maybe Bojan can hit them on the break. But for me, I'm going to stick with my guns and I'm going to say 2-0. Let me know what your predictions are in the comments. Hopefully, if you're new to this, you do enjoy it. Please like the video and subscribe. And now we're going to compare my results with the Mystery Seas. Right, so all the predictions side by side, this is how I've done it, obviously, I've got me on the left, and then I've got the mystery C, then Josh on the right, side by side, so it's easier to compare. So yeah, we've all got Chelsea to win against Newcastle with different results though. I have said that Hull will draw with West Brom, whereas both of those think Hull are going to beat West Brom. Liverpool, we all think Liverpool will win just by a different scoreline. QPR, me and the mystery seat, well, and Josh, actually, all three of us believe QPR will win. I've got a different scoreline than those two, though. And then with Spurs, we all think Spurs will win. Stoke, I'm the only one that think Stoke are going to draw with Arsenal. They both think Arsenal will win. Man City, all three of us believe that Man City will win. Again, all three different scorelines. And this is the most interesting one. West Ham, Swansea, I think they're going to draw. The Mystery C thinks Swansea are going to win. And Josh thinks that West Ham are going to win. Aston Villa, all three of us think Aston Villa are going to win by different scorelines again. And then me and the Mystery C think Man United will win 2-0, whereas Josh, who also supports Man United, thinks they will win 3-1. So yeah, a lot of the predictions are different, some of them are the same, so it's going to be fairly interesting to see how the points total add up. So yeah, as I say, both these guys' links will be in the description, the Mystery C and Josh. Go and check them out. Hopefully you do enjoy this uh, type of video as well. And yeah, if you're new to Josh's channel, please hit subscribe, and hopefully you do enjoy the rest of my channel. Peace.